seated. Friends, we have such wonderful distinguished persons who are living truth in our midst. And one of them, who we always enjoy hearing as he speaks on Tuesday evenings and from this podium, is our speaker this morning, Mr. Clive Edwards. And before I ask him to come forward to inspire us with his blessings of talk this morning, it is the first time standing in front of us that we'll have the opportunity to congratulate him for receiving the National Order of Order of Merit, right? For his badge of merit for his service to this country. Right? So let us encourage him. You know also that Sonita Abrams, you have heard that she also received the Order of Distinction. So we, we really feel that the work that we are doing is being seen elsewhere as well. So we just look forward to the very calm, just wonderful spirit of Clive Edwards as he inspires us this morning. Clive, I invite you to come forward. I can't do that my special Sonia hug up. Because she's so small I can lift her when I'm hugging her. Thanks, thanks Reverend Sonia, and thank you all for being a part of the journey of consciousness through these years. And thanks for your presence here this morning. Certainly wish to join Reverend Sonia in welcoming you and especially blessing you and of course those persons who are joining us on the World Wide Web. Last week, Reverend Anne spoke on the theme of freedom in keeping with the independence and the emancipation celebrations. We call them emancipendence, which we have recently celebrated. And in Reverend Anne's message, she guided us, among other references, to the understanding and the consciousness associated with that experience of freedom. And she described the idea of freedom of us truly living in abandon and letting go and letting the work of spirit move through us as vehicles for the expression of all the principles which we espouse as we practice the principles of truth. And during the week, as I sought to experience a deeper personal understanding of this sense of freedom and this sense of abandonment, it kept occurring to me that nowhere in this abandonment is better expressed than the expression of love. And I was drawn to the signs of mind and the chapter in which it speaks to the teachings of Jesus. And in that chapter, Dr. Ernest Holmes referred to, to John chapter 13, verses 34 and 35, which reads, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love to one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love to one another. So immediately in that statement, the message is sent that love is truly an action thing. And I remember last night, Dr. Tom Johnson, Reverend Sonia came to my mind, Dr. Tom Johnson was a RSI minister who has been to Jamaica. At the back of the he was our guest speaker here on a couple occasions in our Thanksgiving service, and he wrote several books. And one book he wrote, I believe the title was Love is Action, or Love in Action. So Ernest Holmes in that chapter makes reference to the readings in John 13. And in his statement, opening statement, he says, love is a central flame 
of the universe. Love is the central flame of the universe. And if he had not done enough in his assertion, he conscious by saying, nay, the very fire itself. The very fire itself. Love is a central flame of the universe, and it is the very fire itself. And he continues to describe love as self-givingness through creation, and described it as the impartation of the divine through the human. So when we speak about God is love and we are one with God, and we are love. That was what Reverend Erson was saying, the whole issue of the impartation of the divine through the human. And he continued in this treatment of the subject by describing love as an essence which defies analysis, like life itself. Dr. Holmes said, it cannot be explained. It is common to all people to all animal life, and it is evident in the response of plants to those who love them. He completed this sentence by saying, love reigns supreme over all. God is love, and love is God. Now, if Dr. Ernest Holmes is saying that love cannot be explained, who am I to try to explain love? Certainly, I would not seek to, seek to explain love this morning. What I would seek to share with you are two things. My sincere belief that the experience of a consciousness of love is so liberating and it is so, such a great potential for a life-altering state. It is so ex infinitely expansive to us in our growth as human beings, that it is worth our full attention and our consistent development as we navigate our world. And the second point I want to share with you is my belief that the pursuit of a perfect alignment of our understanding of love, that we are one with love and our realization of God as love, and that it impacts and so challenges our overall spiritual development. That all our actions, maybe all our inactions, all our words, all our thoughts, in one way or the other, are always open for self-perusal in terms of the ideal which we are seeking. So in one word, the love thing is worth working on. That's tremendous benefits and value for spiritual growth as we experience our passage through this world. Truly, Dr. Holmes said, the essence of love while elusive pervades everything. It is everything. He said it fires the heart, it stimulates the emotions, it renews the soul, it proclaims the spirit, and it continues by saying, only love knows love, and love knows only love. Isn't that interesting? Only love knows love, and love knows only love. Words cannot express its depths or its meaning. A universal sense alone bears witness to this divine fact, and it concludes by saying, God is love, and love is God. It's very clear to me that, like the words of John 13, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love to one to another, are a call to action. A call which tells us that the space of life, or the canvas upon which we create our individual stories, is exactly where we have the best opportunities to develop and experience the essence of love. So that our actions so impress those who are in a position to absorb the experience that it's clear that we are truly disciples of Jesus. I use the word impress not to be impressed by your magnificence, so to speak. Impress using it makes such a mark. 
Our actions so make a mark in our environment that anyone looking on is very, very clear that we are truly the disciples of Jesus. And we're conducting our lives here in keeping with those commandments and the experience of creating heaven right here on earth. When Ernest Holmes described love as the central flame of the universe, I included in the statement the reference to all life, persons, plants, animals, he truly is reinforcing the idea of love in action and truly reinforcing that the place where we practice and develop and learn the essence of love is right here among life. In the midst of our daily routine, all the opportunities to understand more about that which we are as love. As we negotiate our work relationships, as we conduct our family obligations, as we conduct family relationships that are not our obligations. Okay, you know, we, we have our family, we have obligations as child, as parent, but sometimes we're called upon in the family experience to conduct relationships that we didn't plan on, and that can be difficult. Like my role as executive of my mother's estate. It's been quite difficult. You're not called upon to do these things. But yet, in those difficulties, it's an opportunity to understand more of who you are about love and what you need to do to have a greater understanding and consciousness and expression of the love that we are. As we interact with John Public, and I was preparing this message and I refer to the interaction with John Public, I remember one of my routines of leaving Stonehill and going through Manor Park and going to the Revenue Center at Scotiabank <coughs> once a month. <coughs> Wish I didn't have to do it once a month because you know, the whole banking experience. But once a month, I have to go to do an overseas transaction. And the line is always like a snake. And I always play this game with myself, and I'm sure other senior citizens do. We go in and we take the number, and we join the line. And the game for me is, which day is it that I'm going to get service at the senior citizen entrance, or I'm going to by the time I'm finished, I still have that number. Sometimes I believe that we senior citizens, so I can speak, we senior citizens carry every single bag and pan we have on that day to the bank because every transaction seems to take so long in the senior citizen's line. And because I don't believe, I believe in the concept of service through the senior citizen um, line. But I don't believe in the concept of, of sitting in the citizen area. I believe, and I don't know if I'm right, so Reverend so medically, but I believe if you're going to live and expect to live a long and healthy life, you must get these muscles always working. So I like sign up in the line, even though I'm a senior citizen. I believe it's helping me to strengthen these muscles, and I don't have to sit down. That's my, that's, that's my unmedical uh, philosophy. But back to the interaction with John Public. So you have an opportunity to either complain about the length of time the line takes, or to look at some of the times when I've met persons that line who I've not seen for years who have come to visit and do a transaction, or somebody in the line who gave me some great real estate advice. So, you know, we have those choices as we interact with John Public. But forget about going from Manor Park to Scotia Bank. How many other members of the public are we don't plan to meet with formally? that we meet with on the way. You know, the small minibuses, the big Juta buses, the individual cars and their activities. So I'm just trying to say that there are so many infinite ways in which we transact our life, and so many infinite opportunities that we have to share the idea of love and to learn and to understand the whole experience of what love is and should be. We also have the opportunity to understand love as we interact with our spiritual partners. Because here at the temple, we interact with our spiritual partners. And the temple has business 
to do. The temple as a board. It has strategic planning. It has a whole lot of other aspects of life. And we have to interact with it. And we have also the opportunity to show and understand and experience the quality of love as we work. So while I know that in our quiet times and in our meditation, in our guided meditations, in our quiet reflection, we learn, we're inspired, we're guided, we're directed. And we come out of these spaces so much more with a heightened consciousness, more fulfilled, more consciously prepared. And that has an extremely important space for us, supremely important. I suggest that it is in the space of living that we have the greatest opportunities to learn and discover the essence that we call love. And we always have the opportunity to ask ourselves as we interrelate and transact and negotiate, was that loving? Was that kind? Was that patient? Was that forgiving? Was that fearful? Did I leave that encounter at a higher level of engagement than when I started it? We have all these opportunities to keep asking these questions of ourselves as we meet and greet and work with each other and live with each other as families and friends. It is a space and it is a place where we can do so much more in developing the essence of love. And I believe it is a process by which we best represent the true disciples of Jesus the Christ. Thank you.